GPU prices finally below MSRP, Microsoft Xbox finally on the Steam Deck, and Nvidia finally releasing some good new architecture. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast. So sip a cup of Joe and let's go ahead and talk about Joe GPUs. That was supposed to be like a Joe Mama joke and it just didn't work anyways. We now have a good indication of GPUs finally being under MSRP. This is following the wake of news that we've been talking about over the last couple of weeks of GPU prices falling steadily in February and how Nvidia is cutting prices to AIB partners. And then also now we're looking like AMD's cards are actually going to be significantly underpriced. Yes, my friends, below MSRP to the tune of 35 percent. It's absolutely crazy. So it's only in Germany right now, but it's one of the largest retailers of GPUs in that country, which is Mind Factory. And they currently have two whole GPUs below MSRP. The RX 6500 XT is selling for $159 at the very bottom of the package, which is kind of crazy considering the MSRP of the 6500 XT is roughly $200. And if you converted these prices into what it would relate to here in the US, we'd be looking at a 6500 XT right in the 130 ish dollar region, which is absolutely crazy. But as you can see here, they have two different models. The one that's the cheapest is at 169 euro, which includes their VAT or value added tax, which makes it more expensive than just the actual MSRP. But then the other one's also going for 179 euro. This is actually really incredible because it continues to just show the actual progression of GPUs declining. And honestly, to be quite fair, if the 6500 XT had launched closer to that $150 mark, I don't think I probably would have been so harsh on it. The fact that they were selling it for the same price as the RX 580, which came out several decades ago, just kind of rubbed me the wrong way. But if it actually had a price drop and it looks like it might, if we could get the 6500 XTs down to like a hundred bucks, I'd be super happy with it. But GPU prices continuing to come down. Are you finding anything under MSRP? Let me know down below in the comments. And people are letting other people know on the internet that, hey, if you're playing Elden Ring on the PC, stop doing the multiplier, turn it off for right now, or do the DIY fix that's out there because people who can invade your world who are hackers are actually making it so that your game gets corrupted and you essentially lose everything. There's an exploit around on the PC where hackers will come in, they'll corrupt your files, it'll crash out your game, and then when you open it back up, the character will continuously fall to their death, making it so that you cannot actually play the game ever again. There's people showing this out on the internet, as you can see here, that guy got hacked, it's over! Gonzo is his Elden Ring playthrough. All of them runes, all of them maidens, just absolutely gone. As mentioned, there is a DIY fix where you can kind of get around this. You can spam open the map and teleport before you die, but it's just kind of bad news bears. Turn off online playing if you're PC a player for Elden Ring right now until it gets patched. We'll let you know if this does happen, but this is coming after From Software actually had to shut down its multiplayer on Dark Souls 3 due to an exploit that was going around there. There was some speculation that it might have impacted the Elden Ring launch. It didn't actually do that, but it does look like From Software's multiplayer still needs a little bit of tweaking, and hopefully you don't get screwed. So don't turn on no summoning, okay, my friends? Get the maidens by yourself. But you know what does feel like a little bit of a hack? Playing Xbox games on the go on a handheld. Xbox never released a handheld gaming console, did they? I don't think they did. PlayStation had the Vita, then the other company has their other thing. Anyways, xCloud now available on the Steam Deck thanks to installing a beta version of the Edge browser, which can allow you to play Xbox games on their cloud gaming service. So you have to do some command line tasks in order to get Edge running on the Steam Deck on the Steam OS, but you can do it. This is a mighty future we're living in, my friends. GPU is below MSRP, Elden Ring is out, and you can freaking play Xbox games on the go on the bus. You need the, you need the internet bandwidth to do that, but it's the point still stands. And my point is gonna stand in talking about crypto stocks until the day I die. Bitcoin down 2.3% in the last 24 hours to be at 41,298. Not a ton of movement over the weekend, just kinda steadily on the decrease. Ethereum down 3.33% to be at 28.62, and Dogecoin down 3.6% to be at just shy of 12 cents. And to be just shy of getting this into my computer system, I don't, that's a good segue, Brett, you're brilliant. At this job it's i'm filming on a sunday so the, the new employee is not here but i would just imagine him saying thank you brett actually you know what i'm gonna call him hello, hello sir 
What's up? So sorry to bother you. I'm filming hot news and I need somebody to, to tell me I'm doing a good job. Uh, you're doing a great job. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. I needed to hear that. Anyways, getting back to it, there's a new PC case out there that has leather. It's $140. It's called the Cowboy PC case, the Model 8 Cowboy specifically, but it integrates leather into the PC, which I just like. This is... I feel like, number one, this has probably been done before and I just haven't heard of it, but number two, I really kind of want to see more implementation of these new aesthetics coming into PC cases. We've kind of been just doling around the uh, sheet metal and tempered glass RGB thing for a while, adding things like leather onto the aesthetic portions of the case, not necessarily impacting airflow, putting it in the top panel, as you can see there, or potentially on the tempered glass itself, does give a new aesthetic to, to it. I don't necessarily think it has to be real leather, but I do appreciate the change in scenery and I kind of want more of this. I want case manufacturers to start, you know, coming up with a little bit more je ne sais quoi, good aesthetics. What was that? I'm doing a terrible job. I need to call the new employee back and ask him to, to, to rescind his good job. And you know what? I'm just gonna, I'm gonna keep it for myself. And some people aren't keeping their Mac Studios for themselves. They're tearing them down, popping them open, and showing you what's inside, which is actually kind of a feat because if you look at the bottom of the Mac Studio, there's nowhere to get into it except for you have to take off the little gasket rubber ring on the bottom, pop that off, and then there's screws underneath, and then you could <laughs> rip it out. Anyways, we're finding out that the M1 Ultra chip is roughly three times the size of a Ryzen processor, which is absolutely insane considering it has 20 cores plus 32 to 64 core GPU plus 128 gigs of memory. This is actually a behemoth of a chip and it actually doesn't look that big considering how much power is actually being packed under the hood on that bad boy right there. In case you want to see the teardown of the M1 Ultra chip, you can check out Max Tech. We'll leave a link in the video description for you to check out his video on that teardown. And you're going to want to check out NVIDIA later this week because at their GTC conference, which is happening tomorrow, it looks like they're likely going to be announcing their Hopper GPU architecture because they're putting out a blog post that says they're hopped up because the next architecture is called Hopper. It makes it makes a ton of sense. Anyways, they're going to have AI leadership going on. It's going to be tons of good stuff. This GPU is looking to be an absolute mammoth. Number one, multi-chip module. So that means it has two GPUs fused together, kind of like the M1 Ultra chip. 140 billion plus transistors. That's insane. And roughly 900 square millimeters of die space, potentially per chip. This thing's going to be a massive whopper but down with Burger King. Anyways, we actually might be live streaming this event over on the UFD Tech channel. I actually haven't looked into it at all. I've been busy with a million other things, but if we do, I'll let you know. When does this happen? What time? 8 a.m. Pacific. I will not. I will not be home. That sucks. Okay. What also sucks is this episode of Hot News is over. I'll see, I'll see you tomorrow, friends. Cheerios.